Guys, all right, I know the video you guys are about to watch is another Nick story, and I just want to take a few seconds of your time. I just have two quick things I want to say. Thing number one, I just want to remind you guys that the CK Crew merch is out. This is the Mitchell Robinson design. You guys have been asking about the Mitchell Robinson designs. I've been seeing the DMs and stuff like that, so it is still there. Just go over to the website, see if you can guys get yourself some t-shirts, some whatever you want. You want on a mug, you want on a sweater, you want on a hoodie, it is there. Link is in the description below so you guys can go pick up your CK Crew merch. Obviously, we have the CK Crew designs, all that good stuff. So go check it out. Link in the description below. And secondly, for my Discord people, if you guys didn't already know, we have a CK Crew Discord. And if you are not a member of it already, that link is also in the description below. All these things are super easy to find. You just gotta scroll down, you will see them there. But we have a Discord and it just got fully updated. I want to be able to have a way to talk to you guys outside of just the comment section. I want to be able to communicate with you guys a little bit more quick you know what I'm saying more right off the top we used to do things where we would talk um, during games you know we had a game live chat that was going on in the discord all kinds of things you guys can drop your, your favorite music you guys can talk about you know other sports are in there it is a dope community over at the CK crew discord it has been updated and I hope to be able to talk to you guys and see a lot of you guys there all those links are in the description below remember merch new discord it's me your boy CK enjoy this Kenny Wooten video you asked for it and it's here it is the nick story kenny wooten edition run the intro what is going on ck crew it's your boy ck2k and welcome back to another nick's story this one is about the unsung hero or hero to be Kenny Wooten. A lot of us were really high on this kid all the way back from the summer league, all the way until he got that contract with the New York Knicks. But I'm here to give you guys, as I do in this series, a little bit more detail to the guy that eventually got the contract with the Knicks. We've had a lot of guys that have come through this Knicks roster to then go on to other teams and get nice contracts and have a successful career. And hopefully in this situation, Kenny Wooten's a guy that could be a part of this team long term. But let's get into who he is a little bit more in depth. Now, Kenny Wooten Jr. was born on April 17th, 1998 in Stockton, California. And for those that don't know much about California, that is up north. Now, like a lot of the players that we discussed, Wooten jumped around from high school to high school. He initially went to Stag High before transferring to Manteca High after his sophomore year. Kenny Wooten was a late bloomer to the sport of basketball, only starting to play official hoops his freshman year of high school. His senior season was the year he was really noticed as a basketball player when he averaged 13.6 points per game, 10.9 rebounds per game, and four blocks a game. No, those are not 2k stats those were his legit senior year stats he helped lead manteca to a 29 and 6 record that year which got him on the max preps california all state first team for division three high school manteca high is more known for their football but in that same season they beat ayala high school well from chino hills in the 2016 d3 state finals as a team, they blocked 12 total shots in that game, but nine of those came from Kenny Wooten alone. Wooten also put together his most impressive performance in his high school career in that same championship game, adding 26 points and 18 rebounds to his nine blocks. Kenny was rated a four-star recruit, and he initially signed a national letter of intent to play for Nevada. Unfortunately, that same year, Nevada coach Brian Polian stepped down as head coach as Eric Musselman agreed to take his place. Ladies and gentlemen, it is your good buddy editing CK once again. So I kept calling the old coach Brian Bolian or whatever. That, that was Nevada. They so happened to fire their football coach the same year that they fired their basketball coach. And my dumb self kept reading off the name of the football coach that was fired. But it was actually this man right here, Coach David Carter, who, if you look at his record, didn't have the greatest of coaching tenures when it came to Nevada, so the firing made sense. But David Carter was the coach that was fired before Eric Musselman. My bad. Mix up the information. Clear it up here. Kenny, if you watch this video, my bad, dog. I cleaned it up. Dave, if you watch this video too, sorry. All right, back to the video. 
problem with that was Wooten was recruited by Paulian, and with Musselman coming in, Wooten asked to be released from his commitment to Nevada and was available to be recruited once again. But what ended up happening was Wooten ended up transferring to Trinity International School in Las Vegas for a post-grad year in order to reclassify for the class of 2017. After that season, he then committed to Arizona State, but once again, he decommitted and finally accepted a scholarship to play for the Oregon Ducks. Now, it's no knowledge now that Wooten only played two seasons for the Oregon Ducks, but those two years were very impactful from the 6'9 forward. In his freshman season, Wooten averaged 6.4 points per game, 4.5 rebounds, and led the Pac-12 in blocks with 2.6 a game. In his freshman year, he was also named to the conference's all-defensive team with a total of 92 blocks on the season, which is the third most in a single season by any Oregon Duck. Wooten showed his importance that same freshman year, leading the team in rebounding in a round one win against Ryder, but the Ducks unfortunately lost to Marquette in the second round in his freshman season. Now, in his sophomore season, the Oregon Ducks boosted up their lineup just a little bit. They added Louis King and NBA-bound Bull Bull. Now, unfortunately, they lost Bull Bull early on to a foot injury, but Surprisingly, the team still ended up turning a lot of heads throughout that season. They defied all the odds by winning the Pac-12 tournament and then even going all the way to the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament. Even though Kenny's stats looked pretty identical to his freshman season, he was a lot more crucial to this team in his second year on the boards as well as the defensive side for this very fun team. Sadly though, this team did end up losing by four points to the eventual NCAA champions, Virginia, and Kenny Wooden was NBA bound from then on. Wooten left Oregon as the Ducks' third all-time leading shot blocker with a total of 166 blocks for his time in Oregon. Now, Wooten didn't go into the draft as a guy that anybody was looking to pick up in the first round, but a lot of mocks had him going in the second round. Unfortunately, he was not picked up and Wooten went undrafted. But almost immediately after the draft, Wooten was given an invitation to play for the New York Knicks Summer League team. And this is where a lot of us picked up on what Kenny Wooten could be as a player. Now, Kenny Wooten won over the fans, including myself, after doing what he did best and protected the rims while also showing out with his athletic dunks. Sadly, after what ended up being a pretty disappointing summer league for the Knicks, Wooten was also then released by the team, but was quickly picked up by the G League affiliate, the Westchester Knicks. A lot like his time in the summer league, Wooten continued to impress in the G League, averaging 7.7 .7 points per game, 6.1 rebounds per game, and an astonishing 3.6 blocks per game. He impressed so much that teams were looking to add him to their pro rosters if the Knicks didn't decide to give him a two-way contract before the deadline. Most notably was the Warriors who ended up waving Marquise Chris from their roster when he was having a pretty nice season for a very beat-up Warriors roster. Allegedly, they waived Marquise Chris to hopefully sign Wooten to a deal. Luckily, with a bit of a nudge by the fan base, the Knicks completed a two-way deal for Kenny Wooten for the next two seasons. Now, even though he was signed by the Knicks, he unfortunately never played a game for the team until the league's postponement in March. And to add on to that, he did suffer a thumb injury in February that required surgery where he did not play again for the rest of that season in the G League. So where does that leave Kenny Wooten now? Nobody knows, but what we do know is we would love to see this guy play with the actual New York Knicks at some point in the distant future. To me, I see him as a Stromile Swift, Kenyon Martin hybrid, and that would be very crazy for the Knicks to give up on when one of the big things that the Knicks have a problem with is defending the rim. The minute Mitchell Robinson is not on the court, we give up layups or dunks like it is nothing. And with a guy like Kenny Wooten, he would definitely be somebody that can help bolster our defensive abilities around the rim. But what do you guys think? Do you think that Kenny Wooten is somebody that the Knicks will put into their plans in the long term? Or is he going to be somebody that's going to get lost 
in the sauce and probably picked up by another team let me know all of your thoughts on kenny wooten in the comments below if i left out anything let me know what you have to say in the comments below who are your comparisons who do you see his game look most like i'm looking forward to all the things you guys have to say it's been your boy ck i'll catch you guys in the next video you know what it is let's get it i'll see y'all feeling like i won the lotto always taking trips with a new chick asking where the time goes oh. and i wonder if this is all i'll know